Hey guys, I want to do a video on the doctrine of baptisms, and we discussed this a little bit at the beginning of the last video when talking about the Trinity Oneness debate that's been going on in the last few months, and hopefully that first part of the video shed some light on that topic. But I want to look at this doctrine of baptisms even further, and I want to do this to answer the question, is it heretical to baptize by water in the name of Jesus only? Because there's a lot of pastors that are coming out um, in the independent fundamental Baptist community that are teaching that if somebody baptizes by water in the name of Jesus, that they are automatically a oneness, Pentecostal, heretical reprobate that is not saved. And I want to see if that's true or not. And be a Berean and look at these scriptures and put on our spiritual glasses uh, to gain some discernment because I think that these pastors are getting a little prodful and puffed up and through prodful glasses, spiritual discernment gets a little blurry. Um, and I think that may be what's happening. But there's lots of verses here, so let's get started. We're going to do this quick. Um, I know I say that every time, but we really are this time. Maybe. Um, Matthew twenty eight nineteen. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. This is Jesus speaking. Um, this is after his resurrection, speaking to his disciples, telling them to go into the different cities, go into all the nations, and proclaim his name and preach the good news of Jesus Christ. And this baptism that Jesus is speaking of is not sinful men immersing people in water. It's the spiritual baptism that comes about with faith. It's the perfect imputed righteousness of Christ and the immersion into the body of Christ that comes about at that moment of faith, of placing one's trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus is not speaking of a water baptism here. This is a spiritual baptism that Jesus is relating. In Mark 16, 15, and 16, a parallel verse, it's the same exact thing. Jesus says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Again, like I mentioned in the last video, this is a spiritual baptism. When you go out and teach the gospel to all nations, those who hear the gospel and believe on Jesus Christ are baptized into the body of Christ. They are sealed spiritually by the Holy Ghost, baptized spiritually by the Holy Ghost, and are saved as a result of their faith. Luke 24, 44 through 47, another parallel verse. And this is Jesus speaking. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, Thus it behooved Christ to suffer and arise from the dead the third day. And the repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So th again, this is the resurrected body. Uh, this resurrected Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples. And he's speaking in third person concerning Jesus Christ. Um, and he's discussing the repentance and remission of sins that comes about um, when one hears the gospel. They go from unbelief to a change of mind, a change of heart, hearing the gospel to their salvation and believing it and trusting it. And through this faith, their sins are forgiven and that they are spiritually baptized into the body of Christ. Again, these are all parallel verses and they're speaking of a spiritual baptism. So let's go to the book of Acts now. And in Acts 1, 4, and 5, Luke, who just wrote the Gospel of Luke that we just read in Luke 24, through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, wrote the book of Acts. And he quotes Jesus in Acts 1, 4, and 5. that says, But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. And it goes on, Jesus in verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. 
So again, this is a parallel verse that Luke is relating here. As we saw in Matthew 28, 19, Mark 16, 15, and 16, and Luke 24, 44 through 47. It's the exact same thing. This is Jesus speaking of the spiritual baptism, what comes about once his disciple goes out into all nations and preach the gospel, and those that hear it and receive the gospel through faith are baptized into the body of Christ. And through this, Jesus is also speaking of this filling of the Holy Ghost that comes with power and gave the disciples power to do these things they couldn't do on their own. Um, and Peter relates this in Acts 2, 17 and 18, where it says, And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So Peter's shown a fulfillment of Joel 2 here. And again, speaking of the filling of the Holy Ghost, and this Jesus prophesied of in John 7 when he says in verses 37 38, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, that they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. But now after his resurrection, the Holy Ghost has been given. And the disciples have received it with power for them to go out and preach the gospel, to preach the good news of Jesus Christ, to declare his name unto the nations. Um, and so when we get to Acts 2, nothing's changed here when the word baptism is used. But you have a lot of these oneness Pentecostals and these other Pentecostal churches, the International Church of Christ, the um, Church of Christ, Church of God, um, you know, all these um, counterfeit churches that preach false gospel, that you have to repent of your sins and be water baptized, teaching this false doctrine of baptismal regeneration. They'll go to Acts 2.38 all day long and say that, look, you have to be baptized in order to be forgiven of sins. And they think this is a water baptism here. But nothing's changed. This is speaking of a spiritual baptism. And we'll read it. Then Peter said to him, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So Peter's telling those that are speaking to, specifically the Jews who had just crucified Christ, and asked men and brethren, What shall we do? They were pricked at their hearts when they heard the gospel that Peter was relating to them. Peter tells them to repent. He tells them to turn from unbelief to belief. You've just crucified the Messiah. Turn from that unbelief and place your faith in Jesus Christ. And once you place your faith in Jesus Christ, you are baptized into the body of Christ. This is the spiritual baptism, again, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You're not water baptized by sinful flesh for the forgiveness of sins. You're immersed into the body of Christ and washed by the blood of Christ for the forgiveness of sins. This is what Peter's saying. So you go down to Acts 2.41. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized, and the same day they were added to them about 3,000 souls. Again, this is a spiritual baptism. They gladly received this word. They heard the gospel, and once they heard it, they believed the gospel and were baptized. So now we have that down, hopefully, we can see these verses that the other side will point to and say, look, you have to water baptize in the name of Jesus. See, look at the apostles. Look at, um, look at uh, Peter and look at Philip. And they were all, and, and Paul, and they were all being baptized uh, and baptized in the name of Jesus. But again, as I talked about last time, when you see the word baptize in context with the name Jesus in the book of Acts, it's speaking of spiritual baptism every time. Um, Acts 8, 12, and 13, for instance, when Philip was preaching the gospel to the Samaritans, and in verse 12, 
Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, speaking of the Samaritans, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, behold, the miracles and signs which were done. So you'll see the camp that baptized in the name of Jesus point to this verse, say, look, they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ right here. But this is a spiritual baptism. They weren't even talking about being baptized by water. Same thing in Acts 19, um, where um, Paul passing through the upper coast to Ephesus and seeing his disciples in Ephesus, he said to them in verse 2 of Acts 19, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said to them, And to what then were you baptized? And they said to John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. So he's telling them the same thing that John preached in the wilderness, to believe on Jesus Christ. And then when they heard the gospel, when they heard the good news of Jesus Christ, in verse 5, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is the spiritual baptism that came about when they heard the gospel and received it through faith. So the preachers that are saying, look, Acts 19, they were water baptized in the name of Jesus here, but they weren't. This is spiritual baptism. And we even go to Acts 9 when Paul's conversion, this is speaking of a spiritual baptism. In Acts 9, 17, and Ananias went his way and entered in the house and put in his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hast sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes that had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. So this is Ananias giving Saul the gospel. And Saul, which was blinded on the road to Damascus by the light, when Jesus showed himself to him, and spake to him. Saul's true conversion was right here when he heard the gospel spoken of by Ananias concerning the Lord Jesus. And the sight that Paul received was not only physical, but spiritual. He was blind, now he sees. You know, that's the spiritual revelation that comes about when hearing and placing your faith in Jesus Christ, then Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he received a sight, he arose and was baptized, to speaking of a spiritual baptism. In verse 19, and when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Um, then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. So the first thing that Saul did after receiving the gospel and receiving a sight was get something to eat. It wasn't Ananias dunking him in water. And we see this in Acts 22, 16, when Paul is later recounting this event of his conversion in Acts 9, where he says, And now why tearest thou, quoting or paraphrasing Ananias, who was speaking to him concerning the things of Christ, Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And so again, you'll have these Pentecostal churches, these counterfeit churches that believe and teach the false doctrine of baptismal regeneration, that you have to be water baptized to go to heaven and say, look, in order to wash away your sins, you have to be water baptized. But Paul's sins were washed away by calling upon the name of the Lord and being baptized into the body of Christ through his faith. That's what Acts twenty two sixteen is speaking of. And we just continue in the book of Acts. At 16, for instance, we see two instances of spiritual baptism. We see in verse 14, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. So... In verse 15, when she was baptized, this is a spiritual baptism. This is not speaking of Lydia being immersed in water. This is Lydia's heart having that repentant heart 
that the Lord opened that she attended to those things which are spoken of by Paul, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and she received it through faith and was baptized. The same thing with the Philippian jailer when Paul and Silas told them after he says in Acts 16.30, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. That's how you're saved, by placing your faith in Jesus Christ. Um, and then in verse 33, And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. So the word of the Lord was spoken by Paul and Silas to the Philippian jailer and his family when they heard the gospel and received it, they were spiritually baptized into the body of Christ. It's not speaking of water baptism at all. Paul didn't baptize anybody except Crispus Gaius and the household of Stephanus. Uh, this is, the Philippian jailer is not the household of Stephanus, this household. Um, this is in Philippi. Stephanus lived in Corinth. He was the first fruits of Achaia. Um, or Achaia. And and so, the only times, like I said in the last video, and in several videos, the only times that baptisms should be used in context of water baptisms is when it's speaking of water in context with the baptism. Like the baptism of John when he was baptizing in the Jordan um, River. So, we get to Acts 8, 36 through 38, the Ethiopian eunuch. And it says, and as they went on their way, they came into a certain water, speaking of Philip and the Ethiopian unit. And the unit said, see, here is water. What did hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the unit, and he baptized him. So this is obviously speaking of a water baptism, an immersion under water. And... At the time of this baptism, Philip didn't say anything. He didn't baptize the Ethiopian eunuch in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He didn't baptize him in the name of Jesus. It just says he baptized him. This is, again, this is Luke writing the book of Acts through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Um, if it was so important that you had to baptize by water in the name of the Father and Son of the Holy Ghost to prove that you're saved, then don't you think you would see this at least once in the whole Acts of the Apostles? Um, but again, looking at the flesh and starting a little bit looking at works, you know, and that's what concerns me a little bit is, you know, when you start preaching something and saying because of somebody's fleshly actions, whether they're saved or not, without looking at the object of their faith and their belief and what they're saying, then that's beginning to get concerning. Um, so I'm watching this with great interest to see how far this goes, uh, to see if um, you know these independent fundamental Baptists go more into error because of pride. But again, Philip didn't say anything when he baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, according to Luke. And the other time where water baptized water baptism is mentioned in the book of Acts, is in Acts 10, and this is Peter. Um, but see what comes first. It, it's the spiritual baptism that comes first, and the spiritual baptism that um, Philip relates in the next chapter, uh, being the essential baptism uh, unto salvation. But in Acts 10.42, this is Peter speaking, he says, And he commanded us to preach unto the people, and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive the remission of sins. This is the gospel. This is the same thing that Jesus was relating to his disciples, and it's the same thing that his disciples were relating to all the nations. Um, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And this is speaking in different languages, not speaking in jibber-jabber. Uh, then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? So they were spiritually baptized into the body of Christ. They received 
uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, then they were filled by the Holy Ghost and began to magnify the name of Jesus, magnify God um, through the spreading of the gospel, speaking um, in different languages uh, concerning the gospel. And then Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So here we see Peter commanded him to be baptized by water in the name of the Lord. This is the only instance where water baptism is mentioned in connotation with um, baptism in the name of anybody. Uh, because when Jesus spake his words in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and in Acts 1, it was in relation to the Holy Ghost baptism, the baptism of the Spirit, not of the flesh, not of water. But in the next chapter, Peter, in verse 15, relates, and as I began to speak, and this is concerning the um, uh, preaching of the gospel to the household of Cornelius, which we just read, uh, and as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us, as on us at the beginning, then remembered out the word of the Lord how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? So here he's relating the important, essential baptism that comes about of hearing and receiving the gospel. It's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know, like I said, um, if Jesus was relating to physically water baptized people in the name of the Father and Son of the Holy Ghost, and he was telling his apostles to do that, then Philip wasn't a very good apostle when he didn't do that at the baptism of the Ethiopian eunuch. And Paul certainly wasn't a very good apostle if that was the context that Jesus was speaking um, in Matthew 28, 19. Because Paul, in 1 Corinthians 1, verses 14 through 17, he says, I thank God that I baptize none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I baptize in my own name, and I baptize also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. So, Paul says, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And that's what Jesus Christ told all his apostles to do. To preach the gospel. Because it's not their water baptism that he's discussing. It's the spiritual baptism that comes about after hearing and receiving the gospel. Water baptism is not part of the gospel. And it's not what Jesus was speaking of. Uh, so this back and forth on what should we baptize in the name of, well, as long as you give glory to God, then you can baptize in the name of the Father and Son of Holy Ghost all you want. You can baptize in the name of Jesus all you want. You can baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and Jesus. Um, you know, in Philippians 2, 9 through 11, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So whatever we water baptize in, you know, um, and I'm speaking to the pastors who are ordained to do this, that, you know, it's in the name of Jesus is fine. You give glory to the Father through the name of Jesus. You give glory to the name of the Son through the name of Jesus. You give glory to the Holy Ghost through Jesus. Um, and we should do all things in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God in everything. In Colossians 3.17, again, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. This includes water baptism. This is not an exclusionary verse here, where you do everything, giving thanks, and do 
everything whatsoever in word or deed in the name of Jesus, but no, you can't water baptize in the name of Jesus. That's just totally ridiculous. Um, it's not the context of the verses as we've gone through this uh, study in the doctrines of baptism. You know, and so um, if somebody baptizes in the name of Jesus, yeah, they could be a oneness Pentecostal heretic, but they're not a oneness Pentecostal heretic because they're baptized in the name of Jesus. They're a oneness Pentecostal heretic because they believe and preach an accursed false gospel. This repent of your sins false gospel. To trust in yourself that you can lose your salvation. Um, that you have to speak in tongues in order to show your obedient faith and that you have to prove yourself and go to church and take the Lord's Supper and do all these sacraments and you can fall away and that you can lose your salvation. That's the heretical teaching of the Pentecostal churches. And in the same fashion, just because somebody baptizes in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost, that doesn't make them true on the gospel either. There's a lot of heretical Catholic priests that baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and they're not getting anybody saved because they preach an accursed gospel full of works. Um, you know, both the Catholics and Pentecostal churches both think that Jesus is necessary, but they both think that he's not sufficient for the forgiveness of sins and life eternal. They both think that you have to do something else. And they get people trusting in the flesh. That's the heresy. So, you know, I hope that this study clears this up. Um, on this debate and that we could take a step back um, to see this just foolish debate for what it is. Um, it's the prod of men arguing back and forth on the traditions of men. Um, so stay humble, keep your spiritual glasses of discernment on, and allow the Holy Ghost to lead us in all truth. God bless.